and I apply a curve fit, there's this really nice wizard that, um, that at risk uh, provides where I can just say, hey, I'm gonna assume this is continuous sample data. I'm going to go ahead and let it kind of think about what are the best representations that are possible. I click OK. It basically goes through um, the different approaches and it gives me a distribution. And you can actually pick the different form of distribution that you allow uh, or, or the, the methodology you allow at risk to utilize to determine what is the best fit. Now, in this case, it said I'm going to have a log logistic representation. And I actually utilized one of the specialty methodologies to try to get a better fit around the tails of the distribution. So once it figures out which distribution to use, um, I can then click right to Excel. I say next, and I can then put that distribution in a cell. And so that, that's right there. And in this case, if I basically just add in, and there's different ways of doing this, but what I tend to do is I just add a separate cell like that to point to the distribution, and then add that as a risk output. And then I run this. We'll give it a moment here. I've got a number of things open, so it's a little bit slower than it would normally be. I can now look at how this fit I just created is, is performing. So if I now click on this output cell, I click on uh, this uh, here, and actually let me first, I need to first turn off this, um, this filter. If I now explore and show the output, you see the results of that fitted distribution, but again, over those 10,000 iterations, it just never gets high enough. The maximum value from this particular fit is only $240. Uh, and that just does not give me sufficient fidelity in measuring the riskiness of the price behavior in our time. So instead, what I do is I create what we refer to as this bimodal distribution. And let me walk you through how I actually use this, and it's fairly straightforward. So if I just look at my data, and let's say I assume that normal prices are prices that go up to $500, and that's that's a random or a arbitrary, arbitrary assumption on my part. I could say 100, or I could say 200, or I could say 1,000. Um, I can then use this in a formula to then capture what is happening in terms of the norm, just the simple normal price ranges in this column. And then I can then calculate a scarcity outer. Once I have these, I can then separately fit this column and separately fit this column, which I've done, and then pasted these into my file for this cell and this cell. So this cell represents the distribution of prices when they're normal, and this cell represents the adder when I'm in a scarcity condition on top of the normal price. Now you can do this different ways, but this is just the approach we've taken we found it to be pretty useful. Um, so what that then means is um, I can then combine these two with a risk Bernoulli function, which basically says, well, my actual total price is my normal price plus the scarcity adder when scarcity occurs. And you can see that over here. So right here, I have a risk Bernoulli, Bernoulli function that is pointing to this cell L13. So what is L13? L13 is the percent of time that I'm a, in a scarcity condition. And that actually comes simply from one minus the uh, number of times I'm in my normal condition. And so you can just take that, you can use basically just look at the frequency uh, in which you're in the normal condition or the scarcity, scarcity condition in your actual historical data set 
which gives you a very nice way of ex explaining this to somebody and saying, hey, we know that the vast majority of the time we're in this normal condition that is pretty well behaved. But in this case, 1% of the time, we're in a price that is over $500. And when that occurs, it can be anywhere between $501 and $9,000. And that's all represented in these formulas here. And so at the end of the day, when you combine these together into the bimodal, my bimodal representation, you get this price distribution where even though the prices are still highly aggregated down in this relatively low range, you can kind of see here, you have all these, um, these high uh, prices that are occurring under the scarcity conditions. And what I really uh, enjoy using is this feature of at risk where I can then take my filter, say, hey, let me look at my top percent of the outcome. So I would just set this minimum value to 99% right here. I would set my maximum value to 100%. And when I do that, it shows me kind of like a magnifying glass. It's showing me all those outcomes that are occurring in my price distribution uh, that are giving me in this particular uh, simulation. Uh, I had a maximum a price of $7,700 and plenty of events that are in the $1,000, $2,000 and so forth price range, which again gives me much better fidelity in my risk measurement. And what we really find is that for volatile markets, we really like using this and similar price representations. And we do this in conjunction with our proprietary energy portfolio model, which we call XEPM, to help our clients measure and manage energy risk. But it starts with being able to properly model the prices so that we can get a high fidelity representation of the risk in the portfolio. Okay, so uh, why does this really matter? Well, because it more accurately reflects